There's a wonderful camp. New Yorkers know about this camp. It's called Camp Simcha. Camp Simcha is from the greatest places in the world. It's for those kids never who have cancer. And the counselors are so devoted. I've been to that camp. Just a few weeks ago, I was Shabbos. They had a, a gratitude Shabbos for the volunteers who take these kids to the doctors and take their parents to doctors throughout the year. And so nobody's in the camp now because it's the winter time. but they had all these volunteers that paid for them, the families. It was a fabulous Shabbos. Six to Shreim Lach, that Shabbos. Just amazing. The, the Hasidic Shachesed is out of this world. Anyway, at that camp a number of years ago, there was a counselor, a young man, and there was a counselor, a young woman, who were both in remission from cancer. And of course, they could relate to the kids because they went through it. And they met each other and they decided that they want to marry each other. They want to get engaged. And people said, that's crazy. How could they get engaged? They're both, you know, about cancer patients. Let them wait a while to see that, God forbid, it shouldn't come back. How could you let them get engaged? Who knows what's going to be in the future with these people? And other people said, mind your own business. You know, it's for them. They, you know, they want to live a life. They're entitled to live a life just like anybody else. And this guy was from Australia. And sure enough, they decide to get engaged, and they get engaged. And they're going to get married in a few months. So right before, a couple weeks right before he was supposed to get married, he's going back to Australia just to settle up matters, to take things from his home. And he came to see his wife, his Kala, his bride, before he got on the plane, and everything's fine. And he comes to Australia. It's a long trip. I don't know if you ever traveled from New York to Australia. You have to go through Los Angeles, and there's another 13 hours to Melbourne. It's a very, very long trip. But unfortunately, during that period when he was on the plane, his wife suddenly took a terrible, terrible turn for the worse. And she was rushed to the hospital. And things were so bad that they called the plane. And they said that when this guy gets off the plane, you've got to tell him to call right away. He, you can't even allow him to leave the airport. And the police are waiting for him when he gets off the plane. And they say, are you the young man? And they ask him his name. He said, yeah. He said, you've got to make a call. There's an emergency. You've got to turn around. You've got to make a call right now. And he calls back New York. And they tell him, you've got to come back. You've got to come back. If you, want to see, if you want to see her one more time, you've got to come back. Because she's very, very sick. And he gets on the plane. And it's just so impossible because it's almost like a 24-hour trip going. And now he's got to come back the same 24 hours. And he goes back to Los Angeles. And his head is spinning. And he's crying. He doesn't know what <laughs> he's going to see. And he comes to New York. And he comes into the hospital. And he takes a look at his collar, and he can't believe it. He can't believe it's the same girl. She's so pale. She's so frail. Her face is so white. It's awful. And he doesn't know what to say. And he just, he makes any kind of conversation. And he hadn't daven shachas yet. And he goes into the other room, and he starts praying. And he comes, and he's davening Shimon Esrei. And he comes to the last part of Shimon Esrei. Sim Shalom, before all the kind of turn. Listen to what he says. In Sim Shalom, we ask Hashem, Sim Shalom, Toiva of Racha, give goodness, blessing, and then he comes to these. Kibor Panecha, with the light of your face. Nasatalano Hashem Lakeno, Torah Chaim, with the light of your face. Hashem, you have given us the great Torah, the Torah of life. And he says, God, you have so much light in your face. You gave the Jewish people the greatest gift of Torah. Take some of that light of your face and give it to my kala. <laughs> give it to my kala. You have so much light. Give it to her. Let her face light up. Bring her back to life. I need to get married to her. And he's crying. And he finishes davening. And he goes back into the room. And he doesn't recognize her. Her face is bright. She changed. She looks at him and she's smiling. And as he was talking and he was telling this speech, Dr. David Pelkowitz was there. All of a sudden he gets interrupted by two little kids who come running up. And he says, I want you to know we got married. And these are my two little kids. And my wife and I are doing wonderfully. Now look at that. How many times have we said those words, Kiba or Panecha, the light of your face. Do we ever think of it that way? But when you learn the meanings of the words, of course, you underline them. And then the sitter's talking to you. I give each of you a blessing. Myself, 
the photographer, Rabbi Nissel, all those that are listening, my dear cousin Rabbi Liff was outside, everybody. Hashem should bless each and every one of us that we should make the connection to Hashem with the words of tefillah so that Hashem s- sees that we really have a good conversation with Him. And He should answer our prayers, Latayv, and that Mashiach should come so fast that you guys will be here and I'll bring everybody from America and I'll bring them to join you. Thank you for inviting me and thank you for listening.